All right, welcome to video seven, I think it is. Uh, last time we were talking about communication devices. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about software. So let's talk about the different kinds of software. Uh, there are two primary types you're going to see. Uh, first one is system software or operating systems. And the second is application software. Now, operating systems or system software. That would be, well, things like your Mac, your Windows. Uh, those are the obvious ones. Uh, you also have Android and your iPhone. All these things have operating systems on them. Now, if you want to ask, what is that operating system? What is system software? Well, first off, it allows all that hardware to interact and perform tasks. So you have this computer. It has a processor. It has a hard drive. It has a keyboard and various other things. You need some way to be able to interact with all of those parts and pieces, the microphone and speakers. Then this gives you a way to interface with that hardware. It also allows you to install application software onto the operating system. So for example, you see my little diagram here. Uh, this handles all the inputs and outputs. So if I type something in to a Word document, Windows in this case, or Mac, handles where that information goes and puts it in my Word document so I can see it. Uh, when I want to print, Windows, Mac, or whatever handles sending that out to the printer. If I want to use the speaker, it handles sending music and sound out of the speaker and so forth. Uh, without an operating system, you would not be able to interface with any of that. Now, your basic kinds of operating systems. Of course, you got Windows, uh, which is on most computers. Last time I checked, around 80% or so of computers on the planet use Windows. Uh, you're going to find this most of all. This right here, of course, is Windows 10, the newest version. Uh, Yes, on most of the computers in the world. And it's fairly easy to get software for. Because it's so widespread and most people tend to use it, you can get software anywhere. You can go to the store, you know, Best Buy, Walmart, or whatever store is close, closest to you, an electronics store. And most of the software you find is going to be for Windows. You go online, you want to download some software. Uh, almost anything you find will be for Windows, just about. Every other version also sucks. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Every single one that comes out, every other one is really, really bad. Uh, if I go all the way back, Windows 95, Windows 3.1, uh, we can go way, way back. Well, let's go a little more recent. Windows XP, everyone pretty much loved that system. Uh, then Vista came out, and everyone hated it. It was terrible. Then Windows 7 came out, and everyone said, yay, it's good again. Then the next window came out, Windows 8. And everyone's like, no, that was terrible. And now we're at Windows 10 again, and everyone likes it. So historically, every other operating system for them seems to be a bomb. I don't know why that is. Maybe they're doing it on purpose. Uh, just, you know, by comparison, if something is really, really bad, the next one, even if it's not great, not perfectly great, may seem better than it actually is. Uh, or maybe they just make some bad decisions every couple of years. I don't know. Well, other operating systems, uh, you obviously have the Mac OS. And it looks something like this. Uh, this is going to be on every Mac computer, pretty much. Now, you can actually put Windows on Mac computers as well, as well as some other stuff. But primarily, you're going to see the Mac OS. This, of course, is the second most used system in the world, and it's somewhere around, I think, 12, 10, something like that percent. Obviously, Windows has a far greater reach. Now, you must have specific Mac software for this. That's the downside. It has to be exactly Mac software. If you want to go to the store, you can't just buy any software. There has to be a Mac version, because uh, Mac and Windows operating systems work differently. They don't use the same files and things like that. You want to go online, you have to make sure you get a Mac specific software when you're downloading. So it's a little harder to get software for this. Windows, there's hundreds, thousands, millions of different software you can use. Whereas Mac, 
it's a little more limited. Now you can get a lot of the same software from either one, but of course this one right here is a lot smaller in scope. There's a, there's a lot less out there for it than Windows. Of course that's both good and bad. So now typically it doesn't have as many issues as Windows machines and, and there's a reason for that, uh, which we'll get to later. This is a little bit more stable, uh, mostly because, well, if you think about it, when Mac is released, a Mac laptop or desktop or whatever, this is the hardware, this is the MacBook 5 or MacBook Pro or whatever it happens to be, the iPhone 7. This is the only hardware that comes with that. This is the only processor, the only whatever that comes with that. And they've tested it and made sure it's pretty much stable with that combination of hardware. Windows has to work on an infinite combination of different hardware types, uh, different you know types of RAM, different uh, CPUs, different hard drives, different motherboards, all kinds of other different parts have to work with Windows, which is why it typically tends to not be quite as stable. You'll occasionally get crashes and stuff. Uh, it's not all Windows' fault. I mean, it, it does a great deal of work and does a lot of stuff. Uh, more than Windows or more than Mac does, rather, because it has to deal with a lot more, you know, infinite combinations. Whereas Mac, here it is, and they tested it thoroughly. But both will work just as well as long as you keep everything together and make sure you don't junk it up too much, like we talked about previously. Now, there's one more operating system that you typically will see, and this is Linux. You'll see there's actually several different screenshots for this, and that's because there are hundreds, thousands maybe even, of different types of ver versions of Linux. Linux is the least used operating system of the three. There are other operating systems, obviously, but these are the three primary ones that you see. Everything is free. You would think that free would mean people, more people would use it, but well, Windows is very, very good at marketing. So they, end up, they ended up on most systems. But Linux, they have numerous different versions. It's all open source software, which means anybody can open it up, anybody can make it, uh, anybody can add whatever they want and release their own version. It's a little more techy or technical than your other operating systems, but you can see, as you can see from these pictures, there's actually, I mean, it looks very similar, and there are some that are very, very similar to Windows and Mac and stuff like that. In fact, Windows and Mac have stolen tons of stuff from Linux and vice versa. I've heard one guy who worked at Windows said outright somebody went into Linux and basically copied and pasted some of the components that they were using. A uh, little ridiculous, but I mean you can technically do that. Now, as I said, there are hundreds of different versions. There are some that are very, very, very much like Windows. And there are some that are completely different. Uh, I've seen a few that are for penetration testing, for example, which is basically hacking. Uh, kind of the way that you can say, you know, a good hacker, white hat hacker kind of sort of thing. But they range in, like I said, ease, easy, well, I think Mint would probably be the easiest if you ever want to look. It is, it is all free. If you have an old computer or something, you could download it. I actually have a flash drive with some versions of Linux on it. And all I have to do is plug it in and turn it on and poof it boots up Linux in my computer. Uh, you could do something similar if you wanted to try it out. Like I said, it's free and everything on it is free. It is a little harder to get software for, you can't, because you're not gonna buy any of it, it's all free. But they do have links built into the system where you can just, what do I want? Search and there it is, okay, click and now you've got it. So those are three major operating systems. But there's also operating systems on mobile devices like your iPhone, your Android, even your tablets, uh, even Google Glass, which was somewhat of a failure for Google. If any of you ever seen the little glasses that can do video and all that stuff, uh, they released them a couple a year or two ago, I think, and a lot of people jumped on it, and now it's kind of thrown in the trash. Uh, but all of these things have to have operating systems. You have to have your iPhone, I, iPhone OS that can talk to all the different parts of your phone or tablet or whatever. Android works on, of course, your Android phones. Now, it works exactly the same way as your Windows and your Mac and all that stuff. Uh, 
it interfaces with all the hardware and allows you to click buttons and do stuff like that. Originally, operating systems looked a little something like this, though. All the commands had to be typed in. So as you look, this is actually uh, something called MS-DOS on the left, and this is actually Linux on the right. You had to list, you had to understand hundreds of different commands, uh, books and books of information to actually use computers originally. There was absolutely, I mean, this is one of the reasons computer geeks and words like that used to describe people who were really good with computers came about because to be good with computers you had to memorize huge amounts of information. Now can you imagine years ago uh, there's no pictures, there's no anything and you have to type in every command you want to do. I want to open a file, you have to know the command for that. I want to delete something, you have to know the command for that. I want to do this or do that or go here and do this. You have to know all the commands for them. So it actually made it a lot more difficult back in the day uh, for effectively people to use computers at all. So it was very small as far as the amount of people who can use it. That was, of course, until uh, you got the GUI or graphical user interface. This basically changed the way computers worked as we know it. This allowed anybody to use a computer. Because if you think back years ago, would you, you know, if you had to learn all these different commands, would you be using a computer today? Would you be using Facebook? Could you do that on your phone? I mean, you still can to some point if you really wanted to. But now we have all these pictures. So if I want to open a folder, I just click on it. If I want to save something, I can click on the button or the uh, picture that represents saving. All those commands are actually still being run in the back. It's just you have this nice little interface that you click on it and it runs the command behind it. So you don't have to memorize anything. Even little kids can grab a phone and press a button and open up their favorite game or look at pictures and stuff. Because they know this picture represents you know, the game I want to play and things like that. Same is true for these. Because of the GUI system, it made it possible for anybody to use a computer, no matter, no matter what. So, I suppose that leads us to the question. Who invented the first GUI? Dun, dun, dun. So, if we think about this, uh, I usually get one or two answers here. Uh, when I ask my class, I get Microsoft or Mac, which either of those questions, you know, aren't completely incorrect. Mac is probably more correct than Microsoft, but it's also still not 100% correct. The group that actually made the initial thing that we all use today, where it all came from, Xerox. Xerox actually made our first GUI system. I know it wasn't probably who you were expecting, and some of you may be like, who's Xerox? Well, they're a copier company. In fact, a very large copier company that makes copiers for hundreds of thousands of businesses, millions of businesses across the world. Uh, in fact, Xerox is actually so popular that you know, whenever anyone wanted to make a copy of anything, they never used the word copy anymore. They said, I'm going to make a Xerox of this, or I'm going to Xerox that. Uh, much the way Band-Aid works. You know, whenever you cut yourself or something, you put a Band-Aid on it, right? Well, actually, Band-Aid is the company. It's, it's not actually the, what the little thing is called that you put on you. Uh, that's just a little bitty bandage. Uh, but Band-Aid is the company that became the most widely used. So all of them are now pretty much called Band-Aids. The same is true for Xerox. Now, what ended up happening was Xerox had these R&D guys who were developing stuff for their copiers. And... Basically, what happened was uh, they developed this GUI system, and they showed it to their bosses, and their bosses weren't that impressed with it. I mean, what are we supposed to do with this? Well, wouldn't you know it, Apple happens to be friends with these guys, and they happen to be there. Uh, looking through their stuff, talking with some of their friends, and they saw what they were working on. And when they looked at it, they were just like, I mean, I can imagine it just, heads exploding. You know, right now, all we've got are these commands you have to type and stuff like that. 
but with this, anybody could use a computer. So effectively what happened was uh, Apple came in and just basically take, took it. You know, they said, hey, I'm going to take this idea and I'm going to use it. And they did. They took it, they used it. And you would not, uh, you'd be very surprised at how hard it was to find a booty apple. Uh, the pictures I had to shift to to find that. But basically they took it and started making their own system, which you saw a picture of earlier. Now, they had to hire programmers and stuff to help build their GUI systems. Apple originally was just, they developed computers and sold them. Uh, that's how Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, actually made a big name for himself, making different computer systems. Now, they saw this as an opportunity to make a computer that everybody can use instead of just a handful of people. But they weren't overly skilled programmers uh, for all the different programs that were going to need, be needed for this. So they hired Alf out of the company. Uh, they got, if you notice these two pictures, this right here is Steve Jobs, and this is actually Bill Gates. They actually hired Microsoft to do some of the building for them. So Microsoft was there building things like spreadsheets and graphics tools and various other things for them, uh, for their operating system. Now, after a bit of time, oh, and I should, before I do that, uh, I should mention, did you know both Steve Jobs and Bill Gates were college dropouts? They did not finish college. They dropped out completely. Of course, Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard, so that's a little different, but uh, still, they were actually both college dropouts, and neither could actually get a job today at their company without a college degree, despite everything that they've managed to do. Their own company wouldn't hire anybody that doesn't have a degree. So just as a little side note. Now, after some time, uh, you know, Microsoft and Apple started working together. Microsoft actually got really big because of MS-DOS, which you saw a little bit earlier. They actually paid a guy $80, or $80,000, rather, to build this thing. And then they, it was called Dr. DOS, or PC DOS at the time, I think, and they renamed it MS-DOS. Sold it for millions, uh, which is what got them the prominence to basically start working with Apple. Now, uh, at this point, Apple started hearing stories about how I don't know, uh, some competitor is going to be basically releasing the same thing they are. Uh, the exact same thing, and they're like, who would, who could possibly be doing this? And they, they heard rumors here and there, and you know, Steve Jobs was a little concerned, but he's like, no one's going to have anything on us, I mean, who knows what we're working on completely. Well, Microsoft did. In fact, Microsoft pretty much outright stole it from them. Uh, but not in such a way that they really could do anything about it. They saw the idea, which effectively is what Steve Jobs pretty much did. Steve Jobs threw a royal fit, called Bill Gates in his office, and yelled and screamed for like an hour, and told them he's basically just stealing from him. And Bill Gates looked him in the eye and said, you know, well, that's one way to see it. The way I see it is, you broke into Xerox's house to steal their TV. I was going to do the same thing, but you beat me to it. So... Basically, they both kind of stole from Xerox and from each other, but it was the idea and not the actual execution of it. Now, would you say these things are similar? I mean, honestly. I mean, you got a little apple here. There's no apple over there at all. Nothing, see? I mean, they both have words and little windows and stuff. But yeah, uh... They stole it in such a way that there really wasn't anything they could do about it. And Apple couldn't complain too much. There were some lawsuits and things, but nothing really amounted to much. I mean, Apple stole it from Xerox to begin with. Uh, and that's very prevalent, stealing software from each other. Now, I think we're at the end of this little section. So we're going to stop. Uh, and then we're going to come